Come on, please, please. Come on, give me that fix. Give me that fix. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell, man? Did you see the game, Joel? No. Did they end up winning? Yeah. Yeah, in a miraculous fashion, despite yeah. playing terribly. Uh, I saw um, Darnold had three interceptions. Should have had four. Threw four bad, really, really bad red zone throws. <laughs> and they should have scored. Like... They should have scored four or five extra times today. They had damn near forty first down. Uh, yeah, they were uh, just terrible in the red zone. Sam Darnold's starting to make really, really bad decisions with the ball. But we can talk about that. Bradley, how are you, buddy? Hey, you man. Hanging together. A win's a win, bro. We'll take a win. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Welcome to this thing we call Minnesota Foul Play by Play. I'm your host, Anthony Variano, and I'm joined by my favorite cousin and our NBA 2K expert, Joe Variano, is here to talk some Timberwolves basketball. And What's up? Also with me, the Brothers Haas, as usual. Boys. Yeah, boys. They squeaked one out. The Jacksonville Jaguars gave us one, boys. They gave us one. Uh, and the Jacksonville No, no, Jaguars we won are... the game. We won the game. Yeah, uh, Jacksonville didn't beat us. They didn't give they didn't us even a come close to. The most incredible part of that game was, like, the personal foul ends the game. Like, you don't. Uh, you're going to get the ball back. You have a chance to win the game if you just don't punch a guy in the face. And they couldn't keep from not punching a guy in the face. <laughs> well, he was trying to punch the ball out. Like, that's what he should be doing there. But but he, he clocked him. The only <laughs> way they win that game is if their defense scores a touchdown. The Jack, the, again, I was telling the YouTube audience, we are live on YouTube at Foul Play by Play. Uh, telling the YouTube audience how great Brian Flores' unit has been every single week of this season has just outplayed the offense in more games than it hasn't. And they were incredible today to overcome three red zone turnovers by Sam Darnold. I mean, you've got it. That's what I remember last year. I was telling you how great this team was because they were in games, despite the quarterback deficiencies, they're still in games def despite the quarterback deficiencies. <laughs> they're leading in games, despite the quarterback deficiencies, which are as bad as they were last year at this point. Can we agree on that? Sam Darnold has become the backup quarterback for the Vikings of last year. Any of them, uh, pick one. No, nah, <laughs> I still take, don't think so. I'm going to take a hot take. Actually, I think the offense saved us a little today. We fucking controlled the time. Of, like, we owned the whole game. It almost came back to bite us, Mike. We almost possessed the ball for too long because we no, needed the no. possessions later. <laughs> But he's got to uh, – I'm, I'm curious to hear what my brother has to say. He's got to clean up his red zone play. Oh. This is two weeks in a row now, and this was – Was he at five interceptions in the last two games in the red zone? I mean, I understand yeah. things shorten up there, but their secondary is not that good. And Those were all bad passes. They, yeah. one, one of them they tried to say Jefferson was on the wrong page, but, I mean, that's those are all bad passes. He's trying to go for too much in those situations when you, you know, three points just you're just fine, you know. Even with a backup kicker in there, hey, hey, got ourselves a kicker again, boys. <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah that's a good thing. <laughs> he was flirting no, that upright. I want to hear it, Brad. Stick up for Darnold. Show Darnold yeah. some love. Darnold for MVP, right? <laughs> it's it, it's always tough. The Vikings always play shitty in Florida. I mean, it's just well, it is. I, that's it, what I said. I thought they had too much fun at the bars in Jacksonville. They probably did. Yeah. I mean, and you walk, they did everything they needed to do to win the game. They weren't going right. to, they were not going to lose that game. Um, Yeah. Darnold does need to clean up some of his shit, but I don't know. I, we're like a game I say, out in the North and a game out of what the top seed in the NFC. Exactly. <laughs> a, a fucking, a win's a win, man. I mean, like Denver played Kansas city tough at home today. You know, oh, yeah. they're saying Kansas city's this great team. So it, you go on the road, you win a game that you should win. I don't care. It was ugly. They'll they'll figure it out. I'm not gonna say we should start fucking Nick Mullins next week, though. Oh, Nick. right, yeah. right. That's, I mean, I his thought... his what I what I like about Sam Darnold is his pocket presence. He doesn't yeah, just crumble to the ground there. like it. it but amazing, in those situations amazing. in the red zone, he could take a sack and they could still get three points. 
that's my issue Fair enough. with him. Yeah. Mike, he needs to learn. I, I like the, that he can scramble, but he needs to figure out something other than then that just roll to your left. Like defenses are picking up on that. He got nailed again today doing it. Like he's no, he's got some work to do. I mean, he's Sam fucking Darnold. Like, so that's <laughs> like it's not like we've got fucking Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes. We're dealing with fucking Sam Darnold and do it all right. Just doing fine with Sam Darnold. Just he's doing got, fine. He's got us to what are we? Six it makes me look forward to JJ McCarthy though. Like it, it is doing that. Because now I, he's just ordinary. He's he's what we get kind of expect. And if he's just a game manager, then it makes you excited for what J.J. McCarthy potentially could be, which is just a little bit more than a game manager. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and if, he, if the run game stays healthy, too. I mean, Aaron Jones got hurt today. Yeah, you know, He's a big part of the offense. He came back at the end. Oh, he was the one with the ball in his hands at the end of the game. I think they thought he had like he a Bruce rib or something. He took a helmet right I know. to the fucking bottom of the rib cage. can break a rib and fucking puncture a lung. So no. Um, In wrestling, it would be a punctured lung. Cam Akers looked pretty good. I mean, some of his outside runs, he just needs to go fucking vertical <laughs> as opposed to dancing around. But all in all, like other than the red zone mistakes, like you can't complain about the offense. I mean – Fucking how many third down conversions did we get? And oh god, so many. Almost those, 40 first downs. Those were I mean, like they the moved longest, the ball. It, yeah, those are the longest sustained drives we've had all fucking year, like bleeding clock off the time. Like that's something we haven't seen a lot yeah. this year. So just possess the fuck out of the ball. That's fun. That's my kind of football. They didn't move the ball. Oh, when did Matt Jones become a Jaguar, by the way? And when was Trevor Lawrence not gonna be in this game? Uh that, earlier this week. He's got yeah, those non-throwing shoulder injury or something. Huh. He sucks anyway. Well, Mac Jones did, didn't get it done for him either. I mean, if you look at their stats, they're basically the same. They're the same fucking quarterback. And Trevor yeah. Lawrence is drafted number one. And he's paid a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Then Mac 10 shit. or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, they got two 10 or 11. Up. Well, we've got Sam Darnold. Who had three red zone turnovers and should have been four? I'm just no, like God, you brought it up. Like watching the cast yesterday, it's nice watching like just a fucking power a team that can team. run the ball for thirteen. That's why I like watching the Ravens, guys. Just, oh my God, just fucking destroy teams Control and then... the game. Just yeah, but they the have fuck a the ball. fucking good quarterback that we were freaking dreaming of having in the offseason. I know. If you haven't seen that episode of Foul Play by Play, you should go see it because we were on the Lamar train before anybody. That fucking jump pass that he made was disgusting. Uh, he's actually throwing the ball better than I've ever seen him because he, he's developed some touch on his passes. Oh, it's so gorgeous. It yeah. is so sexy. It makes it look so easy, too. Anywho, we're not here to talk about that team in purple. We got uh, – do we have eight wins already? Are seven. we play, are we seven, seven, seven. Okay, seven wins, so we're – Basically, three wins from the playoffs. A solid playoff team. With one more win comes out of over. Yep. Three of eight. We got to win three of eight games. Is that how this is going to boil down? But not bad. Yeah, I would um, say so. I'd like our chances. Brad, you called the, these three games must win games uh, or winnable games, and we've won both of them. Um, what about next week? If we come out this bad next week, we're not. But we've already done the two of three. You want to win all three, though. We yeah. should. We should win yeah. next week. I, I think our first challenge should be against Chicago, even though they look like dude. Shit Chicago's. Tr- they take. I a, said it at the beginning of the year. They're trash. They are trash. Bad organization, man. Yeah, they're they're poorly horrible. managed. Horrible. The fucking defense is good. They've just got too much talent to be this fucking bad. Like the defense is good. No, that's what uh, that's what scares me about today. Like next week, fucking Tennessee. That should be a fucking win in the Vikings column, but it seems like we just play down. Play to down to our opponent. Yeah, that's what I do on the tennis court. You know, they play like I do on the tennis court. It's just like the better you are, the, the worse I play. I bet you I bet you they have a good session this week with Sam Donald talking. I mean, that's what I like to see after those interceptions. He's like, Sam, come here. Come here. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I mean, he makes the offense so easy for – Shit, Nick Mullins to look like an MVP quarterback and throw for 440 yards in a game. Like, it's yeah. not that 
hard. You have all you got to do is take three sacks there, and you've got nine points. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then again, also like it, it just it seemed like the receivers were playing like it, it just. It seemed like they had no juice. Like the whole team had no juice. That's what oh, whoa, Jacksonville whoa. will do to you. I because I would say they all get drunk juice. out on a boat. You know the love boat situation and the history. No, like one hundred percent boats. Like it's going to get on a boat. It's going to get drunk. It's going to do lewd things. That's what the Vikings do. So mm-hmm. there was hardly <laughs> there was hardly any separation by the wide receivers. Like yeah. Addison just seemed like he wasn't even in the game. I mean, I. I yeah. He wants the ball and shit, but and then you got Jefferson, you know, kind of pouting, like, "What the fuck is this throw?" You, like, I don't like to see that. Like, go get open. Do you Hill- you think mm-hmm. the body language is bad considering a seven win team? One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Like, it's you you run into these stupid trap games that you should go down there and kick the shit out of this team. And, and instead, you, you go out on a boat and drink too much and come in. I agree. <laughs> Addison never made it to the boat though. His car was just parked <laughs> off the off ramp. Oh god, <laughs> that's a terrible joke, Mike. But it's so spot on. Actually, this may be a dumb um, comment, but I wonder if sometimes, because two of the picks were meant for Jefferson. Like sometimes I wonder if he's just trying to get JJ his stats. Yeah, and it's just yeah. like, dude, you got to take what the defense gives you. And if if Jets if Jet is not open in the end zone like he can go a week without a fucking touchdown like especially since they got tj back too i mean he's a big target in the red yeah yeah a lot of money wasted out there if you ain't getting him touchdowns i'll tell you that much i don't know i think i mean it seems like he's forcing the ball it seems like he's feeling less confident and tighter windows he's definitely willing to give jet as the throw and give him a 50 50 ball then uh go somewhere because across the middle, he, he he looks like he's seeing ghosts out there. Yeah. <laughs> Unless he's throwing to Jefferson. Well, no. <laughs> he knows he's throwing into double coverage against Jettas, but against no. everybody else, it's, oh, God, there might be somebody underneath. Jesus <laughs> Christ, please let him not be there. Oh, God, fuck, I fucked up again. <laughs> his problem is, is he fucking sees the ghosts. He can't see the real fucking people. Like, that's his problem. Like, <laughs> oh, God, is that a ghost? No, that's three fucking people on Jets. <laughs> Especially after a... Long day on a boat drinking the night before in Jacksonville. You see ghosts the next day. But all, like in all, re- being realistic, they they should win the next five games. I mean, it it, it no, let's not get crazy. They had trouble Titans, with one of the worst teams in football. It's today. on the road. It's crazy. on the road. Yeah, they'll they'll pick it they're up. They're finding next ways. Week. They're finding ways to lose games. Get the it's fuck just, down. They're just starting to become the team that they're that I know and love and will love to hate <laughs> more like. I, no. Hey, when you got a defense playing like we that, rely on. Shit. no, this defense can win, keep you at any game against just about anybody, except for maybe Baltimore and Detroit. <laughs> no, I think I would say our our yeah. last games of the year are going to be our toughest. Yeah, Seahawks, Packers. They'll be good playoff Packers. seasoning. Yeah. Um, I mean, we should be eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I mean, we could be twelve and two going into the last three weeks of the season, which. Still, I'll even say it. I was the only one I think. If you got spent. eleven, if you got eleven wins going into that last week of the season, you're still feeling pretty good. I'm a, I'm a few wins away, boys, from uh, what I predicted Being our right. season to be. You got to be right one point. I mean, we've been doing this show for years, Brad. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm right almost all the time. <laughs> broken, uh, broken clock. Yeah. No, that uh, uh, the money. I took that ticket in and I put bets on the Jacksonville game. Yeah. Yeah, we're up to like 980 bucks out of that. Did you just bet under every fucking thing or what? No. Um, Must have been yards because there's no fucking touchdowns. Yeah, we had plenty of yards. Yeah, there was. Mm-hmm. I was talking about the Thursday night game. The Jack, oh, the, the Ravens game. It was out of control. Oh, you put it on that one? Yeah. I thought you, you put it on the Vikings game. No, no, I, I'm not that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> a- <laughs> so we're, we're, uh, we're going to roll it all over uh, Cat Grizz. Oh God, that sounds oh, God. a terrible idea. What, That's going to make for an anxiety-ridden cat, Grizz. Cat Grizz has already got enough anxiety attached to it. It doesn't. Have you not watched the fucking Bobcats this year? There's not, not against Montana. I them. haven't. Fuck the Grizz. They're a different team in that game. Damn it. No, they're not. To do stupid shit in the first quarter that fucks us over. Try throwing the ball. <laughs> like they're going to run the ball. They're going to run the ball. Okay. For 400 well, fucking yards. Let's talk about another team that's playing 
pretty goddamn well, boys. And what Joel came here to talk to us about the Minnesota Timberwolves and the subtraction of Carl Anthony Towns and the addition of Julius Randle and Dante DiVincendo, the Italian kid from Delaware. <laughs> As I mean, am I the per only person here who absolutely loves our bench? Joel, tell me no, that. No, I, I do. I wish we'd extend it a little bit more. I'd like to see Dillingham get a couple minutes. Exactly. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know why he's not playing. Like, I especially when um, the uh, DiVincenzo and Nas have an off night. Either one of them have an off right. night. The guy can put the ball in the basket. So yeah, or set up his teammates. So we're not playing enough. We should we should get go to a I, nine. We're cycling. I think eight? if you could get him fifteen minutes every once in a while, they go nine. nine. But but it's either Ingles or Minot, and they right. only get like five to eight minutes. And Ingles has worked his way out of that. Mm -hmm. But he's old, you so, know. Yeah, he's yeah. Defending isn't minutes. something. Yeah, de defending is. He's more there for a veteran presence, you right? Know? And he seems to be too. I see him putting his arms around the guys and bullshitting them. Yeah, yeah. When and the, he's uh, got that rapport with Conley and Gobert when they all were right. on the Jazz. So yeah. yeah. But no, they. The oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask when the fuck your guys' boy Jane McDaniel's is actually going to start earning his contract. I have no fucking clue. His <laughs> offense pisses me off. His defense is is consistently great though. It, it, well, it, it's aggressive, but right. we have the benefit of putting Nah in if he does get in foul trouble, who is awesome at defense. So, yeah. But here, Nah's making, I don't, I can't remember, like six mil to nine mil. And here, like Daniels is making over 20. So it's like, shit. Are we right. paying the wrong guy? Yes. He's a, li he's a little afraid to shoot. I love his length. He's afraid to shoot, but Nah, Nah will throw him up as much as he fucking wants. I know. And he can't shoot. He's I got mean, a he's beautiful been, stroke, he's been man. He does. It's just he makes three pointers from the logo look like free throws. It's such an ugly <laughs> he shot. Shoots it, no, he yeah. shoots it like on his on his feet. There's no jump to it. It's just mm. <laughs> from the hip too. From the hip. From the hip. And he's seven uh, foot tall. Like he's great. I love speaking him. of three point shooting. Uh, Anthony Edwards is only is behind good? through nine games. Only behind Steph Curry yeah. for the most three pointers through nine games. So isn't he? But we're missing like Carl Anthony Towns. I Six, average like five point five, five point eight Mates. three pointers made uh, per game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, we're not really missing his three point shot, but we are missing free throw attempts from Anthony Edwards yes. for doing that. But yep, then that's but, the one thing I'd like to see more of is getting to the free throw line more often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's kind of hard with the space. But even Randall's been hitting a pretty good clip. Of, on Randall threes. is a guy I've really enjoyed watching. That guy puts in a lot of fucking effort, man. Well, I could see a little more on the defensive end, but. Um, it's been going pretty well. Yeah. If uh, DiVincenzo gets a little more consistent on his shooting, I mean, he I like everything else with his game. He rebounds. Dante well, plays he great well. defense too. He's great a, he's defense. an aggressive defender. Yeah, it's just he's been poor. He sh shot pretty poor lately. But yeah. last three games, I think we won by over 15 points each game. Yeah. I mean, so a lot of bench minutes, a lot of bench minutes, and that's what I said about this trade was that we might not be as good in terms of ranking in the West. We're running fourth mm -hmm. right now, which is kind of where I see us. Joel, would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, okay. four through four through six. I mean, a lot of teams are kind of surprising. I wasn't expecting Phoenix to come out no. so hot, but and then you, with Memphis being healthy again, it's like another team you have to worry about. Yeah, uh, yeah, holy even shit. The, John Even the Morant, Clippers are God, playing man. great without Kawhi Leonard. I mean, the Clippers, they just do it by numbers, you know? Do it by committee. But what I really like though. is how healthy our guys are going to be as a result of bench minutes being played. Yeah. Which, at that going into the playoffs, having a deep bench for the regular season, I almost would rather just end up in the top four and rest my guys more often in games. Because, you know, Anthony Edwards isn't going to be a guy who's going to take back-to-backs off. He's, I mean. Well, yeah. And I don't think we have those guys. Really, we don't. Like, even Rudy will play both nights of a back-to-back. -back. Well, the only one I worry about is Conley because he's pretty damn old. 30, but, 37. Yeah. but that's that's what I've been saying. Dillingham, 15 minutes. I mean, yeah. get this guy some time. Yeah. But, yeah, so overall, I like, I, I absolutely love the trade. Um, I do, too. I think, I think as the year goes on, they'll gel even better and better. Uh, and we yeah, don't I'm, have a, a guy that's going to – 
foul at the end of a game, stupid fouls, and put yeah. himself on the bench. End I mean, of the game, know. beginning of the like, game. He loves to pick <laughs> up two in like the first minute. He's notorious for that. I think I think that was. Hey, Nas, you want to play a lot tonight? I'm gonna you know fuck what? this guy up. You know what? Schumann <laughs> calls that whenever he does that. The quick two mm-hmm. fouls over a, a couple of possessions. He's like, mm-hmm. oh, now here's Cat setting up his finisher like a wrestler would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His finisher is uh, oh foul trouble. I gotta sit down. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, take, and Cat's been playing good in New York. Has I mean, he? I haven't been yeah. paying attention. Mm-hmm. He's been and, playing pretty good. Well, they. I think I did hear something what, though. I did hear something that they might be consider. They only did that move to consider maybe moving him again. That's really? interesting because they the the one person they want is Giannis, and if oh. he does become available, they they might have to move Cat to try to get him. Yeah, but do they have enough to get that? I, I don't think so. I mean, no one's ever going to complete with uh, Oklahoma yeah. City. They have all the draft picks. They have the players. Uh, my cousin, Ryan, brought up the Spurs, which I was kind of shocked. They they have Atlanta's picks. Imagine Giannis with Wemby. I mean, oh. that would be pretty scary. Jesus Christ, that would yeah. be more than scary. That would mm-hmm. be unfair basketball. Yeah, but. You need to put guys out I just I just saw price. in the rumors that it was uh, – Bucks are not going to shop him, but if he asks, they will shop him. They, they, they have the trade. All, they leave it all up to Giannis. So. That is incredible. Yeah. Um, Milwaukee's who knows? Kinda, there might be some fireworks in the NBA a, here. Yeah, that's the thing. He's got more power than Milwaukee's got over him. He can do what he wants. It, he can well, well it. no, I, I thought it was cool. The ownership was like, we, we really don't want to trade you, but if you want to be traded, we'll work with you. So that's, I mean, the, that's mm-hmm. not how this usually goes. We saw yeah. how Portland's uh, Dame Lillard. Know, movement of Dame Lillard happened, and mm-hmm. it, they just traded him basically to spite, my, to spite Miami. Um, um, they got a better a return. Yeah, they got you think so? Return. Yeah. Drew Holiday was a better return. But then they, 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 they upped and flipped him. And yeah, they flipped him, but. Who, Tyler Hero is going to be the best player in your deal. Yeah, you, no. you weren't getting Bam in that situation. Bam, no. if if they wanted Lillard, they'd have to trade Bam. If I if I was Portland, that's who I would want. Yeah. So they're just supposed to take a shitty six man who's always injured, uh, I, over a champion and Drew Holiday who plays both sides of the floor. I mean, yeah, no, they got a way better deal from Milwaukee. Well, look at that, our NBA two K mm-hmm. expert. Yeah, hot taking it. That's yeah. our that's our one minute short right there. Mm-hmm. Portland did better than my <laughs> yeah. than the Miami. Fuck Miami. Offered. I hope yeah. we kick their ass tonight too. Fuck them. Yeah. Uh, hey, you know what? The Wild have been really good too, guys. They're fucking incredible. <laughs> Until you said that they were dominating the other night, and then they the just Kings, shit the bed yeah. and gave up five they were fucking dominating goals. Like, possession. <laughs> I mean, they were though at the time. It was were. literally it. it was literally right <laughs> after that text. All hell I know. I'm sorry. And then I the airways were quiet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They had it up on the Megatron. Oh, Tony just Texas. Yeah. <laughs> let's, fuck it. let's fuck it up. <laughs> well, the Kings are really good, guys. Like yeah. that's going to be one we're going to have to overcome in the playoffs. And I don't know we're good enough. Uh, I think we might be good enough to get out of the first round, though. Uh, so that's exciting. I'll take and that with bet. this hot start we've got, we might be able to host that first round, which would be fun. So. That, I'll take that. Mark Andre Fleury getting a playoff run in his last uh, season. Um, boy, but the defensive scoring has just been off the charts since Jared Spurgeon returns. Uh, that it's like guys like Middleton are fucking scoring from the blue line, and it's just incredible to watch. And that's been a lot of fun. Um, Kirill Kaprizov's just the best skater on the ice. He's doing double shifts too. He'll come on with the fourth line at, and then skate onto the first. So he'll skate with that guy from uh, Russia whose name I can't pronounce unless I'm reading it off the page and have read it about a dozen times before <laughs> I had to say it. <laughs> whose neck did it off? Hey, I think I did it. Uh, so. Uh, no vowels in his name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they look fucking terrific. Kirill Kaprizov's like a legitimate MVP candidate right now. I mean, that's fucking wild. Uh, so they're a lot of fun to watch. It's been a really fun season. I'm glad I bought the uh, – fde sports network app that's been uh, a good investment so far um because the wolves have been fun the wild have been fun now let's get into the things that haven't been fun mike the twins (laughs) (laughs) but they're tied for first place essential right now like Uh this is the best time of the year max kepler has declared well is a free agent uh he's not coming back correct i think no um 
no, I don't see uh I don't even want to go through the free agent list because twins aren't gonna I'm gonna sign anybody. Aren't gonna be signing anybody. Um I could see Hey, since we let's do this segue since we've been meaning to talk about this for the longest time. The fa- the FD Sports Network, FanDuel Sports Network, uh takeover of Bali Sports and the effect it's gonna have on the twins' ability to spend. I think it's negligible simply because they already have so little to spend, right? Yeah, it's not gonna add any more. But money. it could, could subtract. I think it's going to subtract a little bit, yeah, until uh, things get sorted out. But that's not just a Twins problem. That's a right. baseball problem, though. Sure is. Um, is So I think uh, you're going to see a lot of teams selling. Well, not like actually selling the team like that's happening with the Twins. Right. Um, but I think a lot of payrolls are going to be going down over yeah. the next couple of years. Oh, yeah. Except for the handful that uh, continue to grow and have markets really than. good broadcast deals like the Dodgers and well, yeah, the Yankee, Yankees and Dodgers. Right. I mean, they draw more interest than fucking the rest of the Mets combined. So, yeah. um, which is also good for baseball, but I think, uh, I think a lot of the smaller markets are going to get smaller until they get this sorted out. Um, but yeah, with the twins, they're not going to spend any money this free agent free agency. And I'm really, um, interested to see what they do with we've got a lot of uh, players up for arbitration now that's going to cost money um i think we got a lot of pieces we could move it just depends on what you want your core to look like going forward um we're not you gonna... said royce lewis isn't going to be a part of that core I, that would be your trade bait if i would have a serious conversation um hands down he's probably the best player we have um non pitching yeah. wise um for 40 games a year i mean that's pretty good but that's that we don't know if he's going to turn into the next buxton but like i would have a serious conversation with him if he actually wants to be a shortstop or a third baseman he can't be on this team and i could understand why maybe he doesn't want to transition to second base um shortstop and third baseman make a lot more money than second baseman do in the MLB. Yeah. Especially if you're a superstar. So I would have a serious conversation with him. Fucks um, up your career too. Look at Chuck Knobloch. Yeah. You couldn't even throw the <laughs> yeah. fucking ball to first base. Um, yeah. I would, but this is the wrinkle in that though, is that the team's being sold. Do you trade one of your best assets? Cause he doesn't controllable have- assets. Yeah. At a low price. That's a rough thing to lose. He's on, yeah, he's on pre-arbitration contract right. for the next, for this year and 2026. That's what makes him so valuable, though. So we've got him locked up through 2029 on relatively cheap Jesus. money. Um, but that being said, that's how you bring back big players. Um, like Tori Hunter. Fuck, you asshole. Dynamite drop in, Joel. <laughs> So I don't know. I don't know what we want to do. Uh, I think um, Brooks Lee, a lock up third base. Um, Correa is obviously our shortstop for the next couple years. What about Royce Lewis sharing time with Byron Buxton in center field? Oh God! Um, <laughs> I uh, <laughs> I'm having flashbacks to when he ran into the wall and got injured. <laughs> like, I'm like, uh, like Tory Hunter. <laughs> No, so I don't. I don't know where Royce Lewis fits. Uh, I mean, he he should be playing more than Brooks Lee. Uh, he probably should be playing more than Carlos Correa. Um, <laughs> it's just I'm I'm curious to see if they could package him with uh, some other dead money, like our backup catcher or something, um, to actually get uh, somebody that fits better. But I think that's Christian off season wise. Is the backup catcher. Offseason wise, I think they're determining now what is their actual core going forward. Like they're three to four on offense. Well, we know it's Correa and it's Buxton, just based on how the money works. They both their contracts end at the same time. That's two of them. I mean, Correa, unless a team would want to eat that contract, wouldn't be moved. Buxton's contract, actually, as much as we give him shit, he is cheap. He's cheap. I said he was going to outperform that contract and it wouldn't take much. Um, I like Correa as like a fucking 
presence in the fucking dugout, though. Really do as a leader of this team. Same with Pablo Lopez. Like, yep. it, I've listened yep. to a lot of podcasts where they've toyed with the idea since we've got Joe Ryan, who was awesome before injury. You're right, and, but it ain't and, enough to just have one. And Ober. Uh, well, Ober actually pitched better than both of those guys when he was on. Um, there's another guy that could be moved to. Teams, Ober's got a lot of value with what he's Yeah, but made. they're not going to do shit until they sell the team, though, right? I mean. When's that going to happen? But that's. Do they have any options? No. No. I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard okay. any of any interest whatsoever. Well, we're not going to hear until somebody actually buys the team. None of really? that shit's going to get leaked. Um, I've heard some, even if they had like a team right now before like the dust settled, it probably wouldn't get settled till spring training. Um, so that's, I mean, our books are actually clean right now. Yeah. Relatively speaking. So I don't know. We've got a lot of pieces we could move to make a better team or they could just stand pat pat and just be like you know what this team underperformed and injured we got the injury bug Uh, maybe things will go better i don't necessarily like that approach when the royals have made leaps and bounds yeah and the guardians right past us i don't think they still haven't surpassed us Uh, vegas still has us winning the central this early just based off of the roster right now no way yes (laughs) So That's somebody, oh, I'm taking Cleveland and Detroit and Kansas City. Actually, Kansas City would be a good bet. That was crazy to watch Detroit and Cleveland in the playoffs this year. Detroit, and, Cleveland, and Kansas City. It was and wild to watch all of them in the playoffs you, this year. Me not caring too much about the shitty sport of baseball. You know, like three guys on all combined teams. You know, Bobby Witt Jr. And then I didn't know a single player from Detroit. <laughs> and they're actually winning games. I'll like, tell you, one, <laughs> one player I do know from Detroit, fucking Javier Baez, who was right. fucking injured. Like, their are <laughs> players not even on the – that's probably why they performed better. Right. Um, hey, winning by subtraction like we did with Carl Anthony Towns. Hopefully it leads to <laughs> playoff wins instead of yeah. playoff losses. That, that wasn't subtracting, man. We got stuff. We got a draft pick. No, back. I mean, like, you win, even by losing that player, you benefit is what I'm saying. Like, well, yeah. I think the big reason they did it was to shave money and here, who knows, we might even have just a better team without them. Yeah. Already right now without the whole money thing anyways. I, well, that's the thing is your bench plays less in the playoffs. So the addition of Dante DiVincenzo isn't as, you know, huge. Well, no, it is huge because Conley, he takes Conley's spot and Conley's old and it's going to be late in the season. So he he does make a lot of sense. And now makes a lot of sense for foul trouble. Uh, We do have a great rotation. Like I said, we, we might have the best eight rotation, one of the best eight rotation, eight player rotations in the league. Including a sixth man of the year who's still coming off the bench for Julius Randle, which is interesting, but he's kind of coming off the bench for everybody. Rudy. Julius Randle, yeah. Yeah. forward center combination. I yeah, he's our Ginobili. I say it every time we talk. It's just a weird comparison. Sense. I Not love it. Me. Yeah, Manu Ginobili. Yeah. I was just putting just them together next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, putting their profile right next right. to each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'd say I bet Nas, Nas Reed would bitch slap a bat out of the fucking. If a bat came on the court, he would slap that thing down just like Manu. <laughs> He'd be like, "Get the fuck out of here!" <laughs> <laughs> and he would do it from 10 feet in the air because he's like mm-hmm. a foot yep. and a half taller than him. That's a great image. We'll have yep. to see if he does in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which that was our weirdest loss. It's like uh, Chris Paul turned the clock back on us. And I think that was the only loss, we, um, loss by 10. Right. I think it was six and seven was our other loss. And then I think the last three, yeah, like I said, we either won by close to 20 points. Led the whole way 15, 20 points. Yeah. yeah. Just running away from teams we ought to run away from. Well, yeah, him get back into games, but we've I done mean, that for years. By by New Year's here, we're going to have some, you know, probably some of the teams that will probably be in the playoffs. So we'll have a tougher schedule. I mean, we have Trailblazers coming up, but I mean, it'll be a lot of 50-50 games coming up here. I've got a quick uh, game I'd like to play, uh, and you oh. can you can join. Both the Variano boys can join. Okay. Um, I know only one of them really is a diehard Vikings fan, even though it doesn't feel that way with text threads. Fucking biggest sellout for any good team playing. Detroit's yeah. really good. Are you are saying he's family? <laughs> I really like watching the Ravens play. Oh, oh, he, God. He's, every time he's a, a fair weather fan. Yeah. 
the lines are really good. No shit, you fucking moron. Of course they're good. I've been building they're this fun for, to watch. I've been building mean, this for five years. It's fun to watch. It's like the, watch the Outrunners. The Outrunners are really fun to watch. They're not a football team. They're a goddamn wrestling just, tag team. Just say embrace your Minnesotaness, though. I mean, it is impressive. I believe I am. The greatest of all time is from this state. I think it's more impressive the transition. The We're quick talking transition. Prince, right? No, yeah. <laughs> Ric Flair. <laughs> oh. Okay, here's here's the game. Quick game, and we'll go through it very quick. I'm just going to go through the Vikings' schedule. I want to hear a win. Oh, and we're then playing this game. A w- win or loss, and then a guess to the score. And then we oh, can I, see we who's can't fucking do the score. Play. Yes, we can. So what? let's do this rapid <laughs> fire. Brad goes first, and then you, Tony, okay? All right. Next Sunday at Tennessee, which that's going to be a lot of Viking fans there as well, though. 31-6. Jesus. Vikings? Yep. Tony. Uh, I'm going to go with. That would be rapid fire, man. 20 to 17 Titans. Ooh, <laughs> Jesus. Okay, next, the following week, Chicago at Chicago. Hey, wait, don't you get to. Oh, I guess I could throw in there. I think yeah. uh, Tennessee, that's going to be uh, 24. 12 Vikings. Why are we doing this? We're not going to know the re- results until well later. It's okay. Well, duh, it's next week. <laughs> <laughs> We're putting money on this? No, we'll stop. I thought it'd be fun. You guys are just <laughs> fucking it's kill not, joys. It's not it's great entertainment, joys. though. If, you know, Let's just go over under, over under 10 wins. Um, At this point, over. Over. Mm-hmm. They'd have to win four of eight games. They just have to play 500. Six, seven, eight. We're at seven. And... I think we're gonna we're gonna have two losses the remainder of the year. What? We're only gonna have four losses on the season. Ooh. So 12 win team. And we're uh, playing like shit. You think you think that's yeah. gonna be only two more losses? <laughs> These are incredible. Yeah, considering how fucking terrible they just played football. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. The last two Kevin weeks Ball. against two easy teams. Oh, yeah. Geez. I'm just Here saying are... their losses are gonna come to Seattle and then Green Bay. They're winning everything else. I agree. I the think Lions? they're gonna they're gonna lose to Seattle. <laughs> Yeah, they're Joel's, going to is uh, my sentiment is Joel's. Is they're yeah. gonna beat the Lions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could have beat them last time. Yeah. Uh, they got better since last time. They picked up a pass rusher. Oh my that pass rusher used to play for the Vikings. Yeah. He's a good and number two. What they had the first time they, they got us, and I guess we got better too because we got Hawkinson back and he didn't play in that game, did he? Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. Hey. I can bring some positivity to the <laughs> Holy shit. Let's out. just stop it right here. There is Minnesota Viking positivity from Anthony Variano. You know, uh, what are you doing all this positivity? Just, he just jinxed them, I tell you. Oh, Look at that. Yeah, I, that's right. <laughs> I was waiting for that today on the phone, though. There was not a lot of negativity coming out of Anthony. And that was I this had would a have friend been the... over. I was I was entertaining company. <laughs> was... Eating pumpkin pie and drinking tea and talking to my Swiss Chris. <laughs> Sounds Swiss, fun. Swiss yeah. Chris is from Switzerland. Yeah. It's, yeah it's okay. And you didn't want okay. to scare him back to Switzerland? Oh, I kind of did. Out? Every time Sam Darnold was in the fucking red zone, <laughs> <laughs> screaming at the television like an angry American. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I scared him away. <laughs> so, you guys think the Cats won it all this year? I, I'm looking at my flight from Raleigh Durham to Frisco as we speak. I'm tracking prices, my friend. We've got, uh, we've already got a uh, what do you call those? Airbnb or whatever. You got uh, one? Yep. So if they, oh, you can cancel though, if they don't. Well, wow, I, I don't even want to talk about that. My buddy Chris from fucking Bozeman, way back in the day, he got it. So he's oh. like, we've got it if we need it. We just need to figure out how to get there now. Dupin and I have a hotel we really like, so I'll just get a room there. I'm just staying for one night. Then I would be flying to Las Vegas for a few months. Swiss Chris might rent the house. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have you guys realize how much I love saying his nickname? No. Uh, it's kind of hard not to say it without a big ass smile on your face. Yeah, that's neat. It's like Swiss Miss, but it's Swiss Chris. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we call it? Yeah, we can call it. My big prediction, though, is 
Twins are going to be trading Royce Lewis away this offseason. Oh, my God. Oh, I thought that was, your Vikings was your big tradition. Who's bringing the negativity oh, that's, now? <laughs> that's not negativity. That could be very positive for the team. Joel, give us a pr- big prediction for the Wolves season. Oh, boy. I, 55 wins would be mine. Fourth okay. seed in the West. That's what I'm. That's right around where I am. Fourth or fifth, yeah. I'm just I'm nervous. Gonna also, go ahead. I'm just nervous that they're going to underperform in the playoffs this year. Yeah, I mean, there's like, only one way to find out. They, it's going to be hard to underperform. I mean, they beat what would have been the champions. I think they're the only team that could have beaten Boston last year was Denver, and we took out them. So, and the Mavericks beat us because Carl Anthony Towns refused to drive the lane and go to the free throw line and just kept checking and just played weak in the post. And that's yeah. Randall. Randall can play strong. Randall don't place weak anywhere. Yeah. 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 Uh, they uh, they get mismatches, and here it's like the smallest guy on them, and Brandel will take advantage. Brandel always takes advantage, yes, and he'll go to the line. He'll happily go to the line. Uh, my big prediction is going to be that the Wild will also be the four seed out of the West. Um, I think that's not out of the question at this point, and uh, especially with the starts that Colorado's gotten off to, they've looked a lot better uh, lately, though. Uh, so, but hey, Winnipeg's always started off hot and kind of gotten a little cooler towards the as the season goes on. But uh, we've definitely overcome the like bottom tier of the West with the return of Jared Spurgeon. Like it's it's blaringly obvious we're way better at not taking penalties, and our penalty kill and our power player both improved. That's a middle of the West team. So I think we host a playoff series. Yay! Uh, as long as everybody stays healthy. Uh, Brad, give us a prediction. Minnesota Vikings finish as the two seed in the NFC. We saw, we heard, we kind of saw that coming and it's actually not out of the question. We mentioned it earlier in the show. They're certainly, I think right now, the two seed in the NFC, are they not? Yes. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Tied with somebody even, though. The even bolder prediction is that the Detroit Lions will finish as the fifth seed. What? Because they won't even win the uh, North. Oh wow! How? Just watch. Just watch. Yeah. He said. Just watch. Just watch. I love the confidence. <laughs> There's I, no mathematical way that can happen. <laughs> Who are they there playing? Is. The Chiefs there every is. week. <laughs> no. Chiefs in Baltimore. They've got them twice each. The next. Yeah. Jared Goff in Week 12 goes down with a Achilles injury. Oh, is that how he's doing the math? <laughs> I've that seen is- it. That's how the sport goes sometimes. Mm-hmm. Hey, it happened to Kirk Cousins last season. That's right. Where do that? Uh, where last little bit here? Uh, one of the funnest teams in the NFL right now. The Commanders. Oh, right. Where do they end up? Oh. Ooh. I could, could see them the winning their division. Yeah, they could be the three or the four. Now, if they There's... win their division, there do they get the the, the well, top three seeds? They just lost today. Did you got to. You it was an to win time though to Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, you have to win your division. No, it was in basically regular. to get it, like so you could finish. Yeah. I mean, let's go to the shittiest division, in the West. Right. One of those teams will get the four seed. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, would, I don't know if uh, I could see the team out of the West. It's not a bad division. It's just really competitive. Fucking None of those East. teams are bad. They're just not excellent. The East is. And the Rams beat us. Eagles and Commanders are leading the East, and I think the Eagles are a little suspect. I think so too, but they do have they they have the ability to run the ball. <laughs> they can Boy, push they push it. their way to the yeah. They've done it before. They can do it again. All right, boys, that's been our actually show. yeah. Right now we're right now we're the fucking fifth seed. I'm trying to the... end the show, Brad. <laughs> Go. We doing the YMCA. Go. No. <laughs> Show that's been our show. Thank you for joining <laughs> us at Minnesota Foul Play Play on TikTok, at Foul Play 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 on YouTube, and Foul Play 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 by Play uh, com on the internet. This is really hard to talk and do a skull chan at the same time. Skull, yeah. I've been your host, Anthony Mariano. I'd like to thank my co host, my favorite cousin, Joe Mariano. <laughs> I'd like to thank the brothers house for joining us. Swiss oh. Chris, baby. Swiss Chris in the house. <laughs> Swiss See Chris. Guys. Love you. Later. Bye. Later, buddy. <laughs>